All right. Let's get this going here. Let's straighten things up here so I don't look like a total slob. Just push something off there, push something off the couch into the floor. All right. Let's go live here. All right. It is Tuesday. Just wrapped up a few little banjo lessons and uh, wrapped up a banjo lesson today. And we are back for the ritual after lesson, post lesson, live stream. So. here um, cover some stuff I've been working on here I haven't really been done a whole lot of practicing lately but I have been working on a little bit of a little bit of a little Roanoke or Roanoke I keep calling it a little Roanoke uh, a little bit of Roanoke um, as in I've been practicing it for the last five minutes that's what I mean by working on it I really haven't been practicing that much so let's pick up here and see if we can do a little Roanoke here not a good start. Let me move my banjo. I can't play with it off to the side like that. Looks better for the camera, but we'll just have to move you guys over here. Do it like that. Move you down here where you can see. style a whole lot. I think there's one person on there that does it and we kind of came to the same kind of came to the same conclusion. You know might be a little bit quiet. You're right. Uh, let me look at my decibel settings here. Let's bring the audio up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Negative six decibels. Okay, that's a little better. playing um, Road to Columbus, which I did that video on that. I didn't do a lesson on it. Let me check and make sure I've got a, make sure I've got my privacy set on and everything. Okay. So we're good. We're good. Okay, so let me bring this down here. Just want to make sure that everyone can see this. All right. All right. So I've been working on Little Road to Columbus. Thank you. 
like it for trying to improvise on a song I'm still kind of working on a little bit. <laughs> Someone come on a video the other day. It's on Ruben or something. Someone come on one of my videos and like, you should place both fingers on your head. This is poor technique. He didn't really say it's poor technique. It's like, you should place both fingers on your head so it would sound better. I'm like, bro, whatever. <laughs> I got, I don't see any videos on your channel. You don't even have a profile picture. I'm like, whatever, man. You, you do, if you can do it better, get on here and do it. The other thing I do pretty darn good, just put my pinky on the head. Can I do John Henry with the fifth string tuned to A? Like the, uh, out of the key of D? Yeah, yeah, you can do John Henry with the fifth string tuned to A. Um... So if you're playing out of the key of D, I assume that's what you're what you're referring to. You just got a different sound out of it. The A and and uh, the A to a D is a fifth, whereas the F sharp that we use typically in detuning as a third. So it just provides a different tone, the third. Uh, the major third is just that reinforcement of a little bit of a happier sound, whereas we get a more bluesy sound um, with a fifth. But we still have that open third string in there, so there's still that major reinforcement. So it's like, you know, you end up with something sounds like this, with tuned to A, fifth string tuned to A. better with the uh, fifth string tune flat though. tune the banjo to A instead of F sharp in the key of D is when we have a G chord within the song. Uh, so, you know, if we were doing something like Home Sweet Home out of the key of D, which normally you do with D tuners. I don't have D tuners on this banjo, uh, but like uh, it would clash with the F sharp, the G would. So you would end up with something that sounds like this. <laughs> doesn't doesn't sound very good um, if we tune to an a the a harmonizes really well with the uh, with the a7 and it also harmonizes with the with the G so we end up with something like this that fifth string up to A just because it harmonizes better with the G. Uh, that's basically it. Crawdad hole, crawdad hole. I don't know that I know that song. <laughs> Because you get a line, I'll get a pole, honey. You get a line, I'll get a pole, babe. 
You get in line, I'll get a pole, and we'll go down to the car that hole, oh, honey. Son of a baby, mine, whatever it is. I don't know the words to it, but it's like, uh, I, if that's the melody to it, it's just like. <laughs> Stockade's Bill Monroe does. It's, it goes like, uh, way down in Columbus, Georgia, wanted back in Tennessee. comes down to preference as far as like planting your fingers uh for me it's just like it's habit it's habit oh is my stream cut out no uh it's just habit though for me uh i could maybe play with both fingers planted it'd throw me off a little bit but i could probably do it having the lack of stability for myself. Uh, I want to have at least one finger planted, 
well, two fingers planted gives you a lot of stability as far as like your hands not going anywhere because your fingers are kind of locked together like that. Um, I like being able to bring my hand down here like this whenever I do a slide or a brush. Like that and keep my pinky planted. Kind of hard to do that when you have both fingers planted. Um, you know. flexibility out of the hand right there and so it's all personal preference depends on what you like to do um, you know it's a little easier to come down here and get that uh, first string I think with uh, with only the pinky planet because your hands in a little more open position you can move that middle finger out of the way or that index ring finger out of the way Two fingers planted, so clearly, like it works really well. I just for me, I like one finger. You know, it's uh, it works works for me. Right. That's one of the things I like with playing music. There's not like, uh, man, you got these people come in that want to say like you've got bad form or you're not doing this or you're not doing that right. Like, oh come on, man! I've been playing eight, seventeen, eighteen years now. I've been playing eighteen years, and I've probably played a hell of a lot more shows than you've played and a lot more songs than you play. I probably know more than you know. Probably no more songs, you know, and it's like, uh, you're going to come in here telling me that I'm doing something wrong, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's not to sound cocky, it's just, you know, you, you know, when you first learn something, you think you're the best in the world, and then you realize how much you don't know, and then eventually you realize, like, hey, you know, you do know a lot, and I know I'm pretty good at what I do, and it's just, it's funny, it's just funny to have a lot of people come in here and be like, hey, you're doing this wrong, it's like, oh, really, show me what's wrong about it, you know, <laughs> That's just sort of the, you know, that's that's just sort of the approach I take with it. Um, anyway, um, Foggy Mountain Music said, uh, you know, can I figure up enough the night break for that? So I assume that is like the, you get a line, I get a pole, honey. You get a line, I get a pole, babe. You get a line, I get a pole. We'll go down to the car dad hole, honey. Baby mine. I think that's the words to it. Um, if you're doing that on like a banjo break, uh, on that melody, high break. Do 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 do. Um, like. That's not a good break at all. We'll figure something out here. I'm gonna play through it a few times, see what I come up with. Could do something like that. What's the name of that uh, fireball mail? So that's that's like how I'd probably do that.
Greg Wagner asks, just got banjo, hoping to learn from your beginner videos. Yeah, I hope you can learn from them. <laughs> they're not as good quality as some of my some of my newer stuff, but they're they're uh they're, they're, the information's out there, a little bit long winded, but they're it's in there. I've been meaning to redo some of those. Uh, I need to redo some anyway for the college courses I have coming up. Uh, so I need to redo some of those for the classes for the students. So I may have some new beginner videos coming up on the channel soon that will be tabbed out and everything rather than called out. Uh, so so that will be exciting. Classes are starting in the fall, so need to get those get those done and out sometime before then. Practicing some more vocal stuff. I haven't been doing enough vocal stuff. stuff in there. You got a high B. Need to relax a little more for that. Yeah, we get into that a little more. Uh, Cripple Creek, Cripple Creek, Cripple Creek. here from the top. Pretty silly there, isn't it? Uh, it's, uh, you know, but the thing is, it works. It's, it works. Uh, it's not like an actual baritone singer. It's, I kind of top out around like a D. Like, here, up there, was in the spring one sunny day. Michael Gow left me, she went away. I used to get a sore throat singing in G. Uh, a song like Sit on Top of the World. And now she's gone, I don't worry. No, I'm 
sitting on top of the world. Uh, like, I'm a baritone. Uh, and so for me to be able to come up in B and do tenor in the key of B, you know, you know, do something like, uh, well, even just a uh, lean, be like, was in the spring one sunny day, Michael galloped me, she went away. Now she's gone and I don't worry, no, I'm sitting on top of the world. You know, I need the tenor to be like, now she's gone and I don't worry, no, I'm sitting on top of the world. Uh, not the best, not the best tenor there, but, uh, you know, you kind of hear it's on the thirds. Mostly on thirds. It really works. That stuff really works. Um, you know, you get up there and do a little ruby. You know, um, like, Ruby, Ruby, honey, are you mad at your man? And, you know, those exercises really work at expanding your range. Uh, you just gotta, you just gotta like, uh, blend head voice. Blend head voice. And, uh, a lot of people think of head voice. They think of this sort of like, uh, they think of this sort of like, uh, uh, wee, 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 that sort of stuff. You think of, you think about Aunt B or Mickey Mouse. And that's, that's not head voice. That's falsetto. Um, it's looking like there's a bit of delay between my stream here and whatever. But anyway, um, you know, you get this, uh, you know, misconception of that. But head voice actually sounds a lot like chest voice if you get the resonance right. Um, so you can get like way up here, like a high D, la, 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 way up there. You can get that up there and get the to where it sounds like a, like a G. So you like a, do a. Something like that, right? Uh, on G. We. We, 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 And it's, it's all really connected. And so if you were to come down, if we'd bring it down a little lower, because you really are in full head voice at that point, bring it down a little lower to say like uh, to where a high note's a C. A C above middle C, right? Sort of an octave C. But, mm, ma, 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 We, 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 we. Um, you, you get this, you get a really, uh, yeah, like, uh, a really chesty sound. And so that's, that's what these rock singers are doing. If you listen to, like, Jet, when they do, Are You Gonna Be My Girl? Like, I'm not singing this in chest voice. When I go, when I go, one, two, three, take my hand and come with me. I'm actually in head voice there. One, two, three. Right? There's, like, no, there's no, uh exertion going on there you're just zipping up the vocal cords and changing your resonance into your head so that's like, and you just relax and you get this sort of like grungy sound going on you end up with this sort of like you get this sort of like one two three take my hand and come with me because you look so fine that i really want to make you mine i said you look so fine that i really want to make you mine Come on and get your kicks. Now you don't need the money with a face like that, do you, honey? And that's how you get that sound. That's how you get that uh, that really like screaming rock sound, and there's no strain to it at all. Um, all the way up there, there's a the whole part. It's like, well, I could see you home with me, but you are with the and you know. And there's that one part. It's like really difficult. Another man, yeah, you know, but. For the most part, you'll get this like uh, you'll get like this really balanced tone to it. It's hard to it's hard to get up there that high. Da, 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 da. I have a hard time with that and getting that screaming sound in it because you start to bring a little bit of strain into it. Um, but you know some of your other songs like "Hell Bent for Leather," right? What key does he, what key does Jewish priest do hell bent for leather? There's the uh, chorus where it goes, the refrain where it goes, hell bent, hell bent for leather. And then he goes, he goes, hell bent, hell bent for leather. That's even probably even be better in, in A. 
Walker goes, Hell bound, tell my father! You know, it's getting like really up there. That sounds really bad, but. You know, you get down and Jay's like, Hell bound, tell my father! And uh, it's just like this, it's really relaxed. It's, uh, even as, scr as scratchy and grungy as it sounds, you know, breaking the law, breaking the law, you know. <laughs> God, what's that other one? There's that one goes uh, up here in space, looking down on you. My lasers trace everything you do. Yeah, there's like a, or an E minor. Here in space, looking down on you, my lasers trace everything you do. You think you private lives think nothing of the kind. But there is no true escape. I'm watching all the time. <laughs> that's, that's what he's doing. That's that's what they're doing. Judas Priest, uh, um, Jet, uh, Iron Maiden. Adam Levine, you know, you do something like the sun, you know, it's like a. It's like. Do some vocal rolls here, right? After school, walking home, fresh dirt under my fingernails, and I can smell a hot as fall. Car screech to a halt to let me pass, and I cannot remember why life was like through photographs and trying to recreate images. And no, yeah, I mean that's that. <laughs> not not a lot of chat going on now. I see I've still got my, got my viewers, but not a lot of chat going on. But you'll see, um, so I guess maybe there's not a lot to say about that. <laughs> but anyway, that's like the, that's the, uh, like the crux of it. You know, that's really cool stuff. I, I really am, was like surprised with that because it like doubled my vocal range to be able to do that. Um, get a more subtle, more subtle approach to it, you know, where you can barely, barely hear it, you know, coming into that like two, five, one chord progression in jazz, like the Sunday morning rain is falling Still some cover, share some skin As it go, clouds are that's, that's all we're doing, we're just like bouncing up and forth right there, right in the vocal bridge, we're like In moments, clouds are shrouding us in moments unforgettable. You twist to fit the mold that I am in. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not like perfect or great on my vocals, but I, 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 I enjoy it. I enjoy singing. <laughs> Get off singing here. Let's do a little up. Uh... Let's do something else here. Let's do a little Sally Good.
was a you spurned the love I gave you, darling. I love you once. We're proud to own. You found someone who you love better. And in my dreams, I walk alone. I'll well, just pretend. It's hard to do this and do backup. Those happy hours we spent together. Wherever in my heart will dwell. My I'll try my best. What's the worst of that? Those happy hours we spent together. Forever in my heart will dwell That's all I have For each tomorrow We will never meet again I'll just pretend Uh, yeah, he might, Earl might have said you shouldn't keep the third string pressed, but... I mean, you could do that. It might sound a little better. The third string does like to ring a little longer, I guess. I usually keep it pressed, though. I mean, I guess I kind of let off of it naturally. I mute it. I don't like to remove my finger from it. Yeah, I mean, it just depends. Sometimes I'll remove it and sometimes I don't, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I probably was holding it down that time. Yeah, I noticed, I noticed that that third string does ring out a little bit. Uh, I don't pay any mind to it myself. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that actually that does actually sound a little better with the third string just sort of muted a little bit after you press it. thought that was a little bit obnoxious but I never really cared enough to actually look anything up on it <laughs> but yeah that's that's a pretty cool little pretty nice little uh, tidbit there
Yeah, what does Earl know? <laughs> nah, either, yeah, I mean, either one of them sounds good. It just, uh, yeah, I think it does sound a little better with, with that, uh, with that muted a little bit, though. I do think that's right, because the, the third string is heavier, and so it has more sustain. And it, it likes to walk on the other strings a little bit. I'll agree with that, because that's something that I've known for years, that it's a little bit heavy. Um, but yeah. But like I said, I just never really, never really did any research on it, just assumed that was just the way it is. But yeah, that actually does sound a little better. I'm going to practice that a little bit. Banjo's got a little longer scale length than my Gibson. Let's see. I'm new to live feeds. Can everyone see who is online? And, and is it? Uh, it's just the, the main host is the only one that can see who's online unless you comment. When you comment, then you can... Well, even I can't see who's online uh, until you comment. Like, no one can see who's online until you comment, I guess is the, the real answer to that. Um... Yeah, bad face. He taught me something there. I'll have to make sure I keep doing that. You know, most songs, most of the songs, it's just never been an issue because uh, I don't play Sally Gooden all that much. Uh, usually I'm playing songs where I'm moving around so much it's just not an issue. You got something like Froggy Mountain Special. It's like... place long enough for it to actually ring out. But you know, uh... Oh no. Let's see, I'm waiting to see how far behind my stream is. My stream's about, stream's about 30 seconds behind. Um... I'm just trying to figure out how far behind my chat is. But, yeah. Sunshine, which is just ridiculous, right? I haven't done it in a long time. It's just one of those songs. That, there's a bunch of songs I'd like to learn and I work on them and I never finish them. It's like, The World is Waiting on Sunshine. It goes like this. And it goes like this. Uh, I think we go to a D.
says, I've got an RK76 Elite, and it's a fine banjo. Yeah, it is a great, it's a great little banjo. I've got, I play it a lot more than the Gibson, just because honestly, I mean, it, it, it's more playable than the Gibson is. Uh, it's just got a little better action set up on it. Uh, the Gibson, I think, has a little better pop to it. Like it, I mean, it, the Gibson's loud. Holy cow, it's loud. It's like a machine gun. You know, you play that thing. But uh, now this one's mellow. It's got a good tone to it. So I really like it. Depends on the music you're doing. It's really great for that sort of, you know, really great for melodics. <laughs> played a mahogany banjo uh i played uh there was a, a gold tone or maybe it was a gold star it was a gold star I played a gold star jd crow model at a pawn shop guy didn't know what he had and he wanted 900 dollars for it and it was brand new and it was a jd crow uh gold star but it just it didn't have the tone that i was looking for it had a good tone but didn't have what i was looking for so i passed it up at the end of the day right you can get a good banjo but if it's just not what you're looking for it's not what you're looking for uh, this is a fine banjo. Uh, I didn't like the wider neck. Uh, J.D. Crow models tend to have, like J.D. Crow signature models tend to have the wider neck that J.D. Crow had, wider string spacing. That's not my, it's not my cup of tea. I like a narrow string spacing. Gives you a little more speed. Uh, I don't have a problem with getting the strings. I've got good piano fingers, right? Little piano fingers. So uh, I don't need a wide neck spacing. <laughs> It goes like this. It goes. That's a melody. It's like do 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 do. So you go like. See, like that's one way to do it. Oh, yeah, that's just like walking right up on the scale.
says, hey, how's it going? It's going good. Going good. Just doing a little picking here. Um, banjo maintenance? Yeah, uh, just like don't use lacquer thinner. <laughs> That's like the big thing, right? Don't use any sort of spirits or anything on your banjo. Uh, a lot of these banjos, well, the poly finishes and the natural cellulose finishes can be dissolved with uh, any chemicals or anything. So, I mean, furniture cleaners are fine. They're obviously not going to have those kind of solvents. They're designed for finished wood, so they're fine. I personally don't use finishes, uh, like furniture polishes on my instruments. I really don't do anything to maintain my instrument except make sure the head's tuned. Uh, and that's usually like once every six months or once a year sort of thing. That and change strings. Uh, if your banjo starts looking dirty, you might want to clean it. But, you know, I tend to like the grunged up dirty look myself. So I get a little bit of dirt on these things. I don't like them when they look new. So um, I don't go out of my way to make it dirty or wear the finish off of the head. I make sure everything is uh, earned. But, you know, I do like to... I do like to, you know, keep a... I do like to, you know, let the banjo show its character a little bit. Now, these things, you play them and they'll get beat up. My Gibson's got the finish missing off of the back of it, uh, right here where my belt buckle sits. Um, I don't have any dings or, dings or anything in my finish yet, but eventually there will get to be dings in the back of this thing from my belt buckle. Uh, the finish will start chipping around the corner. The binding will start kind of chipping away and wearing down. Um, I've already got... Some wear on my binding here where the strap comes across it. That's just these things get worn. Uh, you'll start getting, you'll start seeing wear. My Gibson's been played to the point that there's actually divots in the fretboard. The fretboard's actually worn from my fingers. So, uh, you know, let's see. Nigel says just bought a RK75. Got any recommendations on strings for it? You know, I've never been like one of those uh, string people. It's just like, oh, you know, try these strings or this strings or those strings or whatever will sound better. Um, I tend to just pick uh, just whatever is available. Uh, I like light strings. One thing I will say, go for the lights uh, because the RK75 and the RK76 both have longer scale lengths. That means the neck is longer and the frets are more spaced out. What that means is that the distance between the nut and the neck is longer, and that means the strings have to be tighter in order to achieve the same pitch. And what that means thusly is that you're going to have really stiff strings if you go for a heavy gauge string. Shorter necks are going to benefit more from a heavier string. Uh, longer necks like this are going to go better with a light string. Uh, a medium, medium on this thing, you're going to have a hard time getting these big chokes. <laughs> you go to like a short scale length, I mean, it's almost like you're playing on an electric guitar, like uh, the Gibsons, they have a shorter scale length. But yeah, just uh, light strings, I would go with lights. Let's move this here where you get a little uh, better view of the banjo.
Let's see here. Let's see, I have a 17 fret. That chair says I have a 17 fret tenor banjo, and you can literally bend two full steps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those, uh... <laughs> I mean, the, the shorter necks, I like the Gibson for that. You get, a, like, it's a lot easier to choke. Honestly, you adjust and you adapt to it. Uh, you know, the longer scale length, I've, I've adapted to the higher tension on this. But I go over to that Gibson now, and I'm like, I just mean to do like a full step. And I'll do like three steps on it and not even realize it. I'm like, oh, yeah. Or I'll do, I'll, do, uh, I'll do a whole step. I'll do like a step and a half on it instead. Like, it's really easy to overshoot once you get used to the tighter string tension. Which in some ways is really nice. If you like sort of jamming out and grooving, uh, it's nice to do that. But, you know, I think the better action on the recording thing for me is made up for it. Uh, you know, because at the end of the day, I'm not doing a lot of huge chokes. And I can just power through them so long as I can do my... stuff up. Huh? Just sort of have a little bit of fun, but that's what we're, what we're playing music for, to have fun with. So. Let's have a, let's, let's do another good in here. You know, I, I heard this song. I looked up this song on the internet the other day. I haven't played it. I haven't played it, but we're going to give it a try. Um, it's called... Uh, what the heck's it called? 99 Years is Almost for Life. Uh, Dave Evans did it. And Earl Scruggs did it. Mm -hmm. Because the courtroom was crowded. The judge waited there. My mother was crying when I left my chair. Well, the sentence was sharp, folks. It cut like a knife. For 99 years, folks, is almost for life. Gosh, that's low. I need to bring it up a little bit. Ah, uh, let's do this in A. Let's see if we can do this in A. Or maybe B. Let's do B. I like it a little bit higher. Oh, um, Grumple Slam Alabaster. That's a interesting username. Um, the difference between the two banjos, between like the different banjos is uh, like different price points, right? Entry level versus expensive is pretty phenomenal to say the least because you're actually, it's, it's not like when you're buying a brass instrument or something where the difference is like a little bit, of, a little bit of engineering here, a little bit of better quality materials and treatment, heat treatment and stuff there and nailing and whatnot. Uh, this is, like, with the banjo, the cheap ones are actually built with different, like, actually built differently. Some of them don't have any wooden rims. Almost all of them, none of them are going to have tone rings. Basically, none of them are going to have tone rings, the really cheap ones. Uh, some of them won't even have a wood rim. Uh, the materials, instead of being made out of pop metal or brass, will be made out of aluminum. And all that stuff affects the tone. Uh, so there's a pretty big difference. Uh, and then the tuning pegs. You, know, you got things like the tuning pegs are not going to be as high quality. Yada, yada, right? But like, there's actually a really big difference. Uh, can you make one sound good? Sure. You, I mean, I could set one in my lap and make it sound good. Uh, as far as that goes. But at the end of the day, like, here's the way, here's the way I explain it to people. There is no such thing as an intermediate banjo when you shouldn't worry about getting an intermediate banjo. Uh, an intermediate or an intermediate instrument in general is just not a good investment. Go get yourself a cheap instrument, 
Just whatever you can find, cheap that'll play, and learn to play. And learn several songs and get pretty good at them. And when you once you realize, like, hey, I enjoy this, I'm good at it, I would like to do this for longer, go straight for an advanced, high-quality instrument. Save up yourself $1,500, a couple grand, and get yourself a good instrument. Because that that the way that the learning happens... It's real slow at first because you're just figuring this stuff out. You're just figuring it out. And then once you start getting it going, you're going to start learning real quickly. About right here is where you're getting that intermediate banjo, right? You're like, I like this. I'm going to stick with this, right? And the next thing you know, you're up here. You're playing really well in a couple of years. You're like, man, this that, I've spent $1,000 in a banjo, and now it's a paperweight because I need to go get a better banjo. So just get the better banjo because that good ban- that, that better banjo, you're going to spend an extra $500 to $1,000. And it's going to last you the rest of your life. The intermediate banjo is only going to last you a couple of years before you need to upgrade. And it's going to be like three-quarters of the price or half the price of a good instrument. So just forego the intermediate instrument. Um, go cheap. And then when you're sure you're going to stick with it, get you something get you something advanced. The only exception that I would the only exception I would make is if you enjoy playing the music, but you don't think you're ever really going to play shows or anything like that, but you just want to have something that's a little better to play, uh, then you might go for an intermediate banjo. Uh, but that's only if that's the, the furthest you're ever going to take it. So save up, get you a good instrument if you think you'll stick with it and perform with it. There's just no point in getting an intermediate instrument otherwise. And I would call an RK-75, I would call that a, like a, a pretty top-end instrument, even though it's made in China. It's a China banjo. It's uh, there's a reason I got it over the Madison series, which is a thousand dollars. I spent an extra eight hundred bucks because this will probably be the last banjo that I ever buy. It's got nice inlays, higher quality inlays. It looks better. It's got better quality wood. It's got a better quality finish, natural cellulose finish, which will patina and look better with age. Uh, and it's just overall a little more durable. And it's got the peg head cut that I like. Uh, the aesthetics come into play there because this is an instrument you're going to play for the rest of your life. So, you know, uh, it just depends on what your end goals are. Depends on what your end goals are. But for the most part, I would advise people who are serious about playing to stay away from intermediate. All right, so anyway... There's the whole... Uh, gosh, what does that song goes? Uh... My wallet's killing me. Oh, God. The way I'm sitting, my wallet is busting my butt. Let's take that out for a second. Okay, let's do that. Uh, sounds like it goes, The courtroom was count. All right, that's three, that's three quarter timing. Crowned. The judge waited there. I just lost connection, didn't I? Did I just lose connection? I guess I did. All right, anyway. Mm, my connection might be cutting out on me. We got terrible internet here. Terrible internet. Mm, the court room was crowded. The judge waited there. Go four ninety nine years for is it folks or lord ninety nine years lord is almost full life. What are the words to that? That's a good song. Ninety nine years is almost for life. Lyrics. All right. Oh, it's folks. All right. Mm-hmm. The courtroom was crowded. The judge waited there. My mother was crying when I left my chair. The sentence was sharp. Folks, it cut like a knife. Nine, 
So many good songs. Oh gosh, what else is there? There's like Dig a Hole in the Meadow. That's a good one. That's an old one. That's an old one. I dig a hole, dig a hole in the meadow. Dig a hole in the cold, cold ground. Dig a hole, dig a hole in the meadow. We're gonna lay down Corey down. Wake up, wake up. 
wake up, Don Corey. What makes you sleep so sound? Brave new officers are coming. They're gonna tell you still house down. Dig a hole, dig a hole in the middle. Dig a hole in the cold, cold ground. Dig a hole in the hole in the middle. We're gonna lay Don Corey down. Could do the whole uh, little girl of mine in Tennessee. Am I like dropping connection or something? Let's see here. Sorry, dear, I know. No, 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 that's not it. I can't remember it. I can't remember the words to it. Oh, well. Gosh, I don't know all the words to that one either. Well, we'll do a little, a little up in the key of B. That's a good one right there. We'll just chill out, do a little Molly and Tembricks up in B. That chair says I'm joining joining a trad session in my local pub tomorrow and. Any tips for playing with other people? Um, well, mostly just like, uh, you know, learn some, just make sure you know some chords to like do a roll on or something like that to do backup. You know, if you can, if you can do this, like a basic vamp. And you know the chords, then you can do that. So like this is a B right here. Um, you know, we do like from B, we do like E and F, F sharp, but like, uh, for like a one, four, five, it's like, uh, most of your traditional stuff will be G, C, and D, uh, which is like the same thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, do that or like some rolls. All today's rolls are great. <laughs> Your basics like open G. You can get like a C. And like your D7, you like your basic D. That's like an alternating roll. If you can do that, that's going to get you by with a lot. 
uh, pretty good bit. Uh, until they start playing in weird keys. You know, you start playing out like a C chord or something like that, you'll have to start uh, figuring out like your F and your G and things like that. Because a C, a G, C, and D uh, is a 1, 4, 5. A 1, 4, 5 in the key of C would be a, a C, F, G. Um, uh, man, just have fun. Have fun. That's it. That's it. Have fun. Have fun. And uh, if you don't think you sound good, just like just quiet down a little bit. That's all there is to it. And just try to listen in and hear all you sound. You'll find something that works and sounds good. stairs. traditional music banjo is used as the main melodic instrument. Well, I suppose you better learn the, know the melodies and <laughs> what they're trying to play. <laughs> uh, you know, if you're, if you're new to playing banjo, really the only way around that is just to learn the song. Uh, once you've been playing, once you've been playing for a while, uh, then you can sort of like, as long as you know the melody line, you can sort of do whatever you want. Uh, I play and fill in shows all the time with people who I've never played with. And usually I can, I, they'll ask me to kick off a song. I'll ask them to hum the melody line to me. What's the melody line? They'll, they'll go like, uh, you know. Or they'll sing the words to it maybe. Like, what's, what's the verse to it, you know. And they might do like, uh, I don't know. What's, what's one here? I don't know. It's not really a fair example because I'm get. I, I already kind of know the melody and everything. But they'll do like, uh, I don't know. What's what's a weird one? Oh, you guys have saw me do it a million times. Like the longest train I ever saw went down that Georgia line. The longest train I ever saw went down the Georgia line. The longest train I ever did see. I don't know, like there's all these different melodies like do 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 or just do 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 something like Versus like uh, if you're doing more of like a 
a fair vague. That's not advice. That's not advice. I don't. I don't know what to tell you. Besides, just like learn the, learn the, learn the uh, melodies. Let's see, Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca. How does that go? How does Rebecca go? I should. I, I should. I've never heard that, but I've heard of it. Rebecca. Rebecca Bluegrass Song. Let's look this up here. I'm going to mute my audio for a minute so I do not get a copyright strike. I'm going to look up Rebecca. Because I keep getting copyright strikes on my videos for looking up these stinking songs. So... <laughs> Uh, I'm going to take this down here and I'm going to listen to it. Okay, okay, I'm back. I'm back. Alright, there we go. Um, probably what I would do... Let me bring this down here a little bit. Alright, let's get back over to the stream here. Alright, so I didn't, I didn't get to listen to the whole thing. I'm just not going to spend a whole bunch of time... Um, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time... Like learning a song here right now, uh, with the with the audio muted. It's just not conducive on the video. But you know, I was able to pick up. He's got like this little thing. It's like, oh. I mean, I suppose it helped if I got in tune. Do something like this. Uh, something like that, right? He's got this walk to see. Let me hear that again. I want to hear that again. I'm going to take my audio down here and I'll be right back. Gosh, this is annoying. YouTube. YouTube. Stop. YouTube needs to stop being so annoying. Yeah, so, so they're doing something like this, like, uh... Something like that. Let's see, they're going to that walk to see there. So that's, that's kind of like what they're doing. Uh, this is a simple break, but... Uh, I don't know the melody to it. I, I heard on the B part they're doing something like this. I don't remember if there was a C in there or not, because uh, like I said, I didn't. I wasn't. I uh, only listened to it. Uh, listen to it, you know, once that far. But um, yeah, it's. Don't know it. Don't know it. Figure it out pretty easily. Um, anyway. anyway uh, what picks do I recommend by Greg Wagner? Uh, now, I don't really have a recommendation on picks. I use Ernie Ball Picky Picks, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. Uh, they're just, you know, it just depends on what you want to do. My The Picky Picks are, like, fast. They're lightweight. Uh, they're fairly forgiving on the tack angle. The other, the sort of 
rounded picks are a little better tonally. They have a better sound. But, you know, it's uh, up to what you like. You know, it's up to what you like. You know, so... <laughs> tempted to play that again but I don't want to you know what guys I'm gonna mute myself for like a minute and I'll be right back I'm gonna learn I'm just gonna learn this because it's simple enough I'm gonna learn it let's see here let's close let's bring this one So that one's an odd song because it's most bluegrass songs adhere to a 4-4 timing. That one's closer to a 2-4 timing, just the way it splits the chords. Um, and that can make it, and he uses, I mean, most bluegrass songs can also be split into 2-4 timing. Any 2-4 song, any 4-4 song can be made into a 2-4, but this one, and there's nothing that makes it a 2-4 besides the chord change. Uh, it, but it sounds, you know, a little more like this. You know, it's like a... <laughs> See. I messed up the chord progression. I was off by half by one measure by a two four. I was off by by uh, one measure and two four time. Um, let's see here. Something like that. Okay, anyway. Uh, I do have my volume turned back up, right? Yeah, I can see my volume's back up. Okay. Um, even off on the time. I'm probably off on the timing too. Uh, didn't get the chords in the right place. Uh, that's just one of those things that, you know, I'd have to practice a little bit. Interesting, interesting song. It's got some weird chord changes. I like that. It's not, the, the chords are not weird, but just where they're at's a little bit odd. Uh, they're just, they just sort of split the timing a little bit. Um, yeah, any of the, like, the Jim Mills stuff, the Scruggs stuff, they all sort of follow a similar formula. Uh, you know, there's certain licks that you'll just you'll just hear, like there, there. You'll you'll hear that in a million different songs, right? Uh, Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Uh, you'll hear that in Freight Train, not Freight Train Boogie. Uh, you'll hear that in uh, um, uh, Train Forty Five. Literally the exact same lick. Here at and sitting on top of the world. 
You do that. Um, little girl of mine, Tennessee. Right. So you, you start to hear all these little licks, right? And there's only a few of them that, are, that most of these guys are using. So, um, Joseph Talbert says, knee deep in bluegrass. Knee deep in bluegrass. I do not know that one. I don't think. Uh, there was someone that suggested a Terry Bochum song a while back, and I may have played it. Let's see. Knee Deep in Bluegrass, Terry Bochum. No, I have not played this one. Um, I have not heard this one. I'm going, I'm going to mute my audio and listen to it. We'll see what happens here. You know what, guys? Forget YouTube's YouTube system. They're just they can just copyright. They can just copyright this stinking video, and we'll just uh, we'll just go from there. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and let the volume play through. I'm gonna try and figure this out here. We're gonna learn this song, "Knee Deep in Bluegrass." Let's look this up here. Cause I'm just I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put you guys through having to deal with the music being silenced. Right, here we go. What's this? Alright, so there's an A part. Alright. There's an A part. Alright. Let's see. Man, these these songs are just all cookie cutter. They're just they're just all uh, um, yeah, they're just all cookie cutter. Uh, uh, now, Joseph, you're not going to get me in trouble. Uh, these guys just uh, YouTube YouTube likes to slap likes to slap. Uh, they like to take my money away from me. <laughs> Is what happens whenever I do this. I make a little. I make like a. It's like two or three bucks on these live streams, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fret over two dollars. Um, you know, I monetize them, but YouTube. Whenever I do this, I take my money away. You know, no bad, bad YouTuber, no cookie for you, right? Yeah, you're not getting me in trouble. Okay. All right, let's listen to this. Here. Alright, so he's doing something like this. the type of person to learn these learn these songs lick for lick because I always I don't have the patience to do it it's not that I don't have the patience it's just like there's not, not much point in it because like once you get these licks down you realize there's not like any there's not really any rhyme or reason why they're doing it um they're, he's doing it like this right or he's doing it like this Doing that. Uh, 
like he's doing that, but there's no rhyme or reason for it. You could easily do this. <laughs> like over the top. You do like something simple, right? Yeah, there's like there's no reason for it. No reason for it. But anyway, um yeah. So anyway, that's the chord progression. differently i would probably do that c that walk into the c the same way he's doing it but i'd probably do the different fills afterwards so i'll do something like this or we'll do something like this so i know he's going to the e minor on that b part Going to a, that's a B7 there. That's a C. And there's a D. So we're, there we go. Let's do this again. E minor. B7. C. G. D. Alright, so it's like. Doing something like that. Alright, yeah, so he's holding that a little longer, so it's like... But yeah, that's it. Alright, anyway... Alright, well, since monetization is off the table now, let's go ahead and knock some other songs out here. Let's take some requests. <laughs> Knee Deep in Bluegrass. What's some other songs? Uh, let's find something that's maybe a little more, got a little more, a little more challenging. Let's find something a little more challenging. Um, what we got here? Lonesome Wind. What's Run, this? Don't watch. To Kohl's right now and save on your favorite gear from top brands. Get 25% off the... Of Huh. Oh, that's a different band. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's just type bluegrass. Let's type bluegrass on YouTube and see what we find. Temperance Reel. That's one that we kind of worked on, I think, a while back. This is what you call a jam buster right here. Oh yeah, that's a jam buster right there. tuning at open tuning using they're in G I'm gonna save this song because I want to like learn this one and get it like down temperance real 
All right, so how's it start off? All right, so it's like. easy enough. Where's the banjo break? So he's doing something like... Yeah, he's doing something like that. Uh, a little bit of single picking in there. Let's try it again here. A little trickier. <laughs> well, this is in G right here. Uh, the chords are a little bit. Uh, the chords are a little bit. Uh, a little bit something else. But yeah, that's uh, that is that is one right there. Yeah, I worked on this a little bit. We had so, uh, someone requested it. It might have even been you, Just. I don't know, but someone requested it in the previous jam or previous live stream, and I worked on it there, and I never really finished it off. So I'm just gonna pick it up right here. I like that where he's doing. Yeah, he's not keeping the roll going. Cause I was doing this. He's doing a little bit of a pause in there. I like that. like this right here. Let's see here. We're working on temperance real right now, otherwise I do believe in low ground. Um maybe in a little bit. How does billions low round how does billions low ground go? It goes like do 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 It's almost like the same thing as Temperance Reel. It's like it's similar to it. Oh. Man, I keep my connection is so intermittent. Our internet here is awful. Uh, you guys have heard me say this before, but it's really friggin' horrible. Um... So if it cuts out, it's just like we'll have internet, and next next minute we don't. And then we have internet, and then we don't. And it happens about every ten minutes we lose internet. 
uh, and it just sort of cuts on and off. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's enough that the stream can stay going, sometimes it's not. Anyway, um, let's see. That's it. Called it. Called it, called it, called it. Alright, let's see here. A little bit of temperance thrill. tricky to set. Um, I always recommend setting the, the upper limit first and then setting the lower limit because for some reason when you set the lower limit first uh, it causes you to basically not be able to tune the upper limit. So I always set the upper, upper limit first. Um, Cotton Eye Joe Bad man for Cotton Eye Joe, I've been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Oh, God. There's that one that's like, uh... Isn't this some Cotton Eye Joe? It goes like, uh... It goes like, uh...
guys. It's been good hanging out, but I think uh, I think it's time to end the stream. It's been about two hours here I've been picking, and uh, it's about going on 10 o'clock. So, guys, uh, that being said, I'm going to hop off here. It's been fun hanging out with y'all. I hope y'all tune in next time, and I'll see y'all later. Take care. <laughs>